legend sunrise meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed I can feel it coming in Golden, golden. I'll follow only golden in spring rainbow trout and hummingbird wing golden I'll follow the golden 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 thing so this morning I pulled my daily oracle card this deck uh, the Woodland Wardens by Jessica Rue, and I've talked about this on my other platforms before, but I love this Oracle deck. It is so great for daily pulls. So this morning I decided to pull a card and I got the Owl and Hub, which represents wisdom. And I thought that this particular card was very interesting where I'm at in my personal chapter and just moving and everything like that, but I wanted to go ahead and read what the definition was for this particular card in case it resonated with you too. First, we're gonna take a sip of our hibiscus berry tea. Known for their nocturnal vision, owls represent knowledge with a hint of mystery. The hop is an impressive plant able to climb up 20 feet in a single growing season. Combined, the pair indicates spiritual and intellectual fulfillment. Upright, you have come to the end of a long journey. Relish in your achievement, taking deep, satisfying breaths. Pulling that card this morning was so validating and reassuring that the journey that I am on is has been quite a long one. As I make this video now, I can just see like I have come so far and I'm really proud of myself for that and just the work that I have done and being able to be in certain circumstances where I am able to reflect that healing and share that compassion with others and empathize with others and have important conversations that need to have had uh, so that I can move on in healing and other people can move on in healing. So pulling this card this morning was truly validating and gave me a sense of relief that I feel like I have been searching for for a really long time and also just a sense of peacefulness. I mentioned in my previous video that I would be talking about some cleansing techniques for your home. Whether you moved into a new home or not, this is something that you can continuously do. I like to do it periodically um, on a monthly basis to just cleanse away any old negative energy that may have seeped in from outside sources. Um, and it's just a really great way to maintain and manage your home. There are actually quite a few home traditions when it comes to moving into a new space. One tradition when it comes to moving into a new home is replacing your broom with a new one. It is believed that the broom from an old place will carry on that old energy and it's actually bad luck to place it into your new home. So you will want to dispose your old broom and gather a new one. I am a witch that is currently broomless right now. <laughs> I do not have a new broom yet. Um, I was really sad to actually remove the one that I made in my um, DUI collaboration with Ella, but I just simply could not take it with me. It is something that I truly believe in and I did not want to carry that old energy. Traditionally, another housewarming gift, um, particularly, particularly found in Scotland, is gifting salt and bread. The salt was used to ward off evil spirits, so you would sprinkle it around your home. The salt would ward off any evil or negative energy. And bread is often found in a lot of traditions of it being something that is shared among others, something that is being blessed. And so it's a great home blessing gift as well. Another tradition which is found in Ireland is to exit where you entered. And this is supposed to bring on good luck and abundance into your home. Last but not least, the tradition of painting your porch or your doorway blue and blue was associated with the element of water which would confuse evil spirits so that was one way that you could ward off any evil spirits or unwanted spirits from your home there are a few reasons why you want to connect with the house spirit and that's because the home 
is truly a place of protection. It's a space of nourishment. It's a safe space for you, your family, and those that you love. Researching a lot of different um, folk practices in particular, you will find that common people will visit the witch in their home. And when they visit their home, you hear stories of the witch over her cauldron in the you know fireplace. And so the home of the witch is such an important spirit to connect with because it does provide that safe haven to perform your magical spell work. There's so many things that happen within the home, so many memories that are made that over time a home will develop its own spirits. It's from the history of the energies that have been in it, where it exists, where it was built on. Connecting with the house spirit can provide an opportunity to connect with your home on a deeper spiritual level. You will find when you go into certain homes that you may feel, especially if you're like pretty sensitive to energy, like if there's a certain energy that might be feeling off or it feels really joyful. And I think that just has a lot to do with the memories that the home has had, um, the history of the home, where it is, and just the tending and care of the home. This is why I think it's really important to treat your home as if it is, as if it's like a plant, as if it's yourself. It is like, I kind of like to think of it as like an extension of like my practice. And so because it is the space that holds my, altar where I perform my spells and where I commune with my spirits like I should take care of the house spirit as much as I take care of my spirit and my other spirit. There are a few ways to go about this and we're going to talk about maybe starting with offerings to your house spirit. I also find that a lot of the times I can turn to the house spirit when I am in need of something such as finding my misplaced keys, which is something very common that I do. If I have misplaced something and I don't see it turn up anytime soon, I will do a pretty simple offering to the house spirit to be like, hey, can you help me out? This was actually something my friend Ella also talked to me about how if you lose something, like offer some candies to the house spirit and you'll be surprised. And lo and behold, I was surprised. Where you decide to place these offerings is offerings is entire, entirely up to you. But perhaps it is somewhere like the kitchen. It could be in the living room. We have a fireplace in our home. That is where I particularly like to connect with the house spirit. The fireplace historically has been a symbol of, you know, where you often would find a witch, you know, stirring her cauldron. It was also a space where you would often find wards. Like the chimney itself was viewed as an entry point for other spirits and energy to come into the home. So historically, and, I, and I've researched more specifically in England, so it might be different in other regions. I obviously don't want to speak for other regions that I've not researched personally. I'm sure that the chimney has been found in like other cultures as well, but specifically in England and just the research that I've done there, a lot of practitioners would place wards, and not even practitioners, just common folk um, who believed in evil spirits coming into their homes and like causing ill will, they would actually place some wards within the chimneys and this is actually one of the resources in um, traditions that I read about was from The Black Toad by Gemma Gary. Great book, by the way. Highly recommend it if you're interested in English folk magic, specifically in the West Country. So there was a particular ward that was made out of like bacon and meat, and you would use pins to essentially like tie down the evil spirits, and then you would place it in the chimney. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I will if necessary, but um, my husband was like, um, can you stick to just like the other things that you do? Um, you know, perhaps maybe not putting bacon up in the chimney. And I'm like, you know what? That's fair. That is a fair thing to say. But with that being said, it is like a source of energy to come through. And so I like to do some protections and just have some wards around our um, fireplace. But I also just, I see the fireplace and just the element of fire as life and passion. How I have seen it reflected throughout history of the fireplace and it being like the heart of the home and like it's beating, it's alive. It feels really good to have that space dedicated to the house spirit. I will leave some candies and um, that is one of the ways that I have decided to connect with the house spirit. Just to introduce myself, just to give it an offering um, to provide peace and safety 
uh, for myself and for my family. You may also see like coins being something that you could offer your house spirit. Water is also something that you can offer spirits and maybe even some um, like wine or other beverages. Just follow kind of what do you think that the house spirit, like what does it feel like? Does it feel like it wants like some sweets? candies, cookies, or does it feel like it wants like some water? I try to follow my intuition and just what the energy of the home feels like, especially when it comes to furnishing it and like decorating it. If my husband places a particular like item somewhere and I'm like, oh, that doesn't feel right. Then that is the house spirit saying, actually this would feel better over here. So like particular plants, particular flowers, that's just how I kind of communicate, communicate with my house spirit. Another way of attending to your home is cleansing. And this is where mundane meets magical. Tending to your home and cleaning it decluttering anything, that is a really great way to clear away any stagnant energy. If there is a particular corner of your house or just a closet that always tends to gather some materials and just be a little cluttery, it might be a good idea to go ahead and tend to that and just kind of declutter. I feel like that's why a lot of us feel better when our laundry is folded and put away no matter how much we hate it. It is my least favorite chore to do. But I know that by doing this action, I am tending to my home and also tending to myself. If you work with other spirits, some chores can also be dedicated to them as an act of devotion. So that is another way to kind of make these chores that seem mundane a little bit more intentional. One of my personal favorite ways to really do a deep cleanse of my space is a floor wash and with this floor wash i will also use the water to wash my doors and just any other such as windows door frames doors um again like the fireplace any sort of entry points for the liminal space now there are a few recipes that you can do to make a floor wash and i have shared one already before on my platform of I think it's like cleansing routines for beginner witches. But there are other different recipes that you can do that is a really popular one. But also I wanted to share, and again, this isn't sponsored or anything like that, but this is a modern witch tip. So I picked this up at the store today because I had to do other errands. And this is um, a floor cleaner that I actually purchased from Target. And so this is just a floor cleaner concentrate. So it's orange and rosemary scented and I think the purpose of this is actually that you use it in um, one of their like reusable spray bottles but I decided to just purchase this and I filled up my sink with very hot water and I poured it just a little bit in here and so this is what it is it's just like a concentration I poured maybe like a fourth of it in there just to make sure it wasn't too much and just I made sure I really diluted it. I essentially used that to wash my floors and as I filled my sink with the hot water I called upon the spirit of water. Water is a really great element to work with when you're doing cleansing spells. The way that I called upon the spirit of water was I call upon the spirit of water to help me cleanse away any old or stagnant energy and to welcome in protection and joy. Orange is a really great correspondence when it comes to cleansing. It's, um, it's also very vibrant and energetic. So I like the idea of it really cleansing away anything and then kind of replacing it with newfound energy. Whereas rosemary, I think of as like a gentle kind of protection, not as like gentle as lavender, but it is just like a reassurance of reestablishing boundaries. When I say floor washing, I don't mean to just like mop around your floor, but like you're getting really into the crevices and the like corners of your home and also using a cloth to wipe the baseboards so this isn't like a, a super simple like cleansing okay we're done um it's a little bit more in depth and the more in depth that you can get the i feel like the better the cleanse is 
and especially when you decide to take a cloth and wipe down the windows and doors as well it just really just reaffirms those boundaries and just cleanses away anything that may have been lingering prior to you moving in or even if you're not in a new home this is something that you can do currently within your house so i hope this video inspired you to tend to your house spirit get to know it a little bit in the next video i will be sharing with you a home blessing and this is a spell that you can do whether you have been in your home for a while or if you're relocating as well until then thank you for being here and i'll see you in the next one